So, the Williams Formula 1 team, one of the biggest names in F1, a team that have fielded some of the legends of the sport, from Nigel Mansell to Damon Hill, Pastor Maldonado, and most recently, Roy Nassani. Bruh. In FP1 for the 2020 Spanish Grand Prix, our boy Roy would get his first taste of F1 machinery on the Formula 1 weekend, and, well... <laughs> But who actually is this guy and why all of a sudden is he sat in a Williams on the Formula 1 weekend? Hey there guys, I'm Will and welcome to FP1 and today I thought we'd take some time to chat about a certain Roy Nissani. The guy is currently in his second season of FIA Formula 2 but hasn't sat on a single seat of Rostrum since 2017 and yet here he is testing the FW43 while the likes of fellow Williams Jr and W Series champion Jamie Chadwick gets no such opportunity. So what's going on here? Well today let's look back at his career and figure out exactly how bad is Roy Nassani? Roy was born into the family of racing god Chanot Nassani in Tel Aviv, Israel. And at the age of six, Roy would begin his career in karting, while also watching his father be signed on as the test and reserve driver for the Minardi Formula One team. Oh yeah, at this point I should probably mention, when I said racing gods, eh, that might have been a, a, a bit of a lie. In fact, Chanot's success in motor racing is about as visible to see as Lewis Hamilton's tax returns. Nevertheless, Nassani's results in karting were a bit lacklustre, and it's quite funny actually that on the Williams website, it states that Nassani had a successful karting career, though neglect to go into any more detail than that. And perhaps that's because, from what I can find anyway, he was just plain dreadful. His best performance would come at a second place finish at the 2008 Milan Dorari race in Pompassa, and that's about it. Like, seriously, I can't find a record of him winning anything in karts. Yet, here we are. Nisani would step up to kart racing in 2010 in the Formula Lister Junior category. Stats from this year are pretty hard to come by, but most places state that Nisani finished 8th in the standings, with one pole but no wins or podiums. Now, I say most places, I should say all places except the Williams website. They state that Roy claimed three wins and yet just one podium, so how that works I will never know. Either way, if the F1 team you work for is having to make up wins and performances for you, it just shows that you're complete and utterly shit. Anyway, Roy's fortunes would improve, albeit slightly, when he graduated to the ADAC Formel Masters Series in 2011. This only would take two podiums and finish 11th in the standings in this first campaign, but would improve to 9th in 2012 while also taking his first win in the category. 2013 would see Roy make the step up to FIA Formula 3, though we'd see our boy slipping back to his old habits. No wins, no poles, no fastest laps and no podiums isn't a fantastic set of stats for two years in the same category. Though, to be fair to him, this was a very competent field of drivers. Nisani was up against the likes of Daniel Kvyat, Felix Rosenquist, Nick Cassidy and also Tatiana Calderon. We should also mention here that his time in F3 was populated by several stupid incidents. So, for example, here where Roy just drives out into an unsuspecting Lucas Wolf. Roy was very quick to realise this mistake, running away from a furious wolf asked for the accident. Bruh. Nisani's next attempt at world domination came in the form of the Formula Renault 3.5 series, but to be fair to him, there was a lot more better results here. Nisani picked up a first podium in 2015, before a much more successful campaign the year after, yielded three wins, three poles and a further seven podiums, all culminating in a series best fourth in the championship. 2017 saw Nisani add a further win and six podiums to his career statistics, finishing fifth but being more consistent over the course of the season and picking up more points than the year before. That said, we would still see some of Nisani's silly incidents creep in once again, for example taking out the leader in Silverstone, then brake testing Johnny Giacotto at a wet Belgium. And yet despite all of this, we saw Nisani graduate to FIA Formula 2 for the 2018 season, driving with the Campos team. In what can only be described as a dreadful year, Roy finished with just one point to his name. 140 behind teammate Luki Giotto, with his highlight of the season being a 10th place in Belgium and then taking out Alex Albon before it was made cool by hashtag blessed. His poor performances led him to being dropped by Campos for the last four races of the season, with Roberto Meri stepping in and taking his car to a podium in the final race of that campaign at Abu Dhabi. Nassani would suffer an injury in training at the start of the 2019 campaign, forcing him out of motor racing for the entire year. Now, in most circumstances, this could spell the end for a young hopeful trying to make it to Formula 1. Yet, Roy still managed to secure a return to Formula 2 with Trident in 2020. An F2 season that, so far at least, has gone... not very well. Alongside this, our boy managed to finesse his way into the Williams Junior program, securing three FP1 appearances for the team over the 2020 Formula 1 season. So I guess the question you're all asking now is, 
How on earth can someone with such little accolades to his name manage all this? And the answer is sadly simple. Money. Nassani's career has been funded by high profile Canadian billionaire Sylvian Adams, a guy who has been quoted saying that he wants to make Roy a world champion with the Williams Formula 1 team. Like, I'm sorry. Oh, this guy is delusional. However, at the end of the day, with the Williams F1 team struggling for cash right now, perhaps it isn't so bad that Roy is in that team. Like, I don't know about you, but I'd rather have to put up with him in the seat than lose the team and lose a team with so much pedigree as well in the sport altogether. But now the discussion is over to you guys. Let me know down in the comments what you think on Roy Nassani. Do you think he deserves the chance to be in the highest level of motorsport? And if so, how well do you think he would do if he were to step up to a race seat in the near future? As always, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe and share the video with your friends. And I'd like to thank everyone again for the amazing support on the channel recently. It's honestly been incredible. But yeah, that's all for me today. I'll be back tomorrow to give you my instant thoughts and reactions to the 2020 Spanish Grand Prix. But until then, have a good one.